Alexa, open screen mask. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this constant image height screen masking system. I'll show you how to do it affordably and make it look super pro just like this. So follow along in this video and you'll see how you can do it as well. Hey, it's Dan from the Mixture Rich channel coming to you today from my cinema room. And over the next couple of days, I'm going to be building a projection cinema masking system for my constant image height screen. Uh, that's an absolute must for me because I want a more sophisticated cinema look, but also I want to have better image contrast. Uh, when you have a wide screen, it's great for cinema scope movies, but when you have other ratios like Netflix at two to one or HDTV at 16 to 9, you're going to get some vertical bars up the left and the right, and that's the light bleed from your projector. Ideally, you want to mask these off. So in my case, with my 2.35 to 1 screen, I want to have these light absorbing masks that are mobile and also motorized and adjustable so that I can basically adjust them to any screen ratio from 16 to 9 all the way back to the open position. Like many of my projects, I want to do something that is simple, but functional, at the same time cost effective, fun to do, and is not going to take a lot of time to build. Um, so my design is anchored in the Zemi Smart motorized curtain track system. They've got a lot of options to integrate that with home automation. Uh, it supports protocols like Z-Wave and, and Zigbee and Wi-Fi and Tuya. Um, and of course, you can layer on top of that Google Home and Alexa for voice control. My particular setup has Z-Wave and I've got the Samsung SmartThings uh, ecosystem and I've got Alexa sitting on top of that, which is great for the voice control. Um, Zemi Smart sells that track system in multiple lengths and it's really affordable. Uh, so you can find something that suits your project. It's got a really strong torquey motor and it has um, a belt system that runs through the track and pulls a trolley along with these freewheeling hooks. And that's meant, of course, for curtains. In my case, I'm going to adapt that to work with custom made mask panels out of uh, one by two lumber that are going to hang from that. And then I'm going to cover those masking panels with a black crushed velvet that I uh, ordered online out of California. Uh, and I had it shipped to me. Uh, it took eight to 10 days here to Canada and it's a lovely pro product. Down below will be the links to the Zemi Smart curtain rail system, as well as that fabric and maybe various other components uh, that I found. So I'm gonna show you my assembly step by step, uh, but I'm not gonna get into the assembly, of course, of the Zemi Smart track system itself. It's got great instructions. There are lots of YouTube videos as well as those that are produced by the Zemi Smart company itself and that shows you how to put it together and it's really simple. Um, and I also won't get into the dimensions of my room and my panels and my screen and all that because that's unique to my particular cinema. It's not going to work for you. You need to do your own measurements. But the one thing I can tell you is that barring something unusual in your setup, uh, this project can be adapted to your project with uh, with ease. So anyway, I really do hope you'll enjoy this uh, this video. If you like my channel, please do subscribe. Please like this video and also uh, click the notification bell if you want to be notified of uh, next content that I put together. So uh, let's get on with the project. So the first step, of course, was to install the Zemi Smart uh, curtain rail to the ceiling, which I've done. That took, of course, uh, some time because you want to get some precision into it. I, try, I had to measure and figure out exactly what distance it would fit off of the wall so that the center of the track is aligned just appropriately so for my panels to hang vertically and uh, in front of the screen without touching the screen because I don't want the panels to slide across the, 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 the light absorbing velvet that's uh, on the... Um, the frame around the screen because eventually it's going to wear out. So I wanted, you know, to leave enough tolerance so that the the screens that I'm going to make are going to hang properly. So to date, I've got the the track up and uh, there's the uh, the motor up here in the corner. And you can see right here that I have uh, just a piece of uh, pine. Uh, it's just some one by two pine hanging from uh, the uh, the rail itself, uh, just so I can do some tests. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to say Alexa Cinema Screen Mask 50%. And as you can see, it's sliding over. Now, these values don't mean anything at, at this point. Eventually, I'll figure out what the precise values are to be able to mask off at 16 to 9 or 1.85 to 1 now, or 2 to 1, 2.1 to 1, uh, and of course, all the way to CinemaScope at 2.35 to 1. 
All right, so I've uh, framed up the masks using a uh, one by two uh, pine lumber. As you can see, it's just uh, the appropriate uh, vertical length that I need. And then of course, uh, I've put the horizontal members in there to give it the rigidity and structure and to keep it square. I mean, basically I brad nailed it together and I did add a couple of uh, angle brackets on the inside uh, corners just to make sure that it stays uh, absolutely uh, square. Uh, so now I've got it hanging there just as a test. I've got it sitting at the outer position. Uh, I've also got the Zemi Smart uh, hooked up with uh, with Alexa, and so I've got it currently sitting at what is the 82% mark. Uh, I've determined just for for testing purposes that the 62% mark is where the 16 by 9 ratio hits in. So let's uh, let's give this a shot. Alexa, Cinema Screen Mask 62%. So that, uh, that worked really, uh, really well, in fact. Um, so, I mean, obviously I'm gonna have to pay, play with the values once everything gets set up. And of course, I've had to make sure that my screen is perfectly centered on the wall so that, you know, this is a double opening uh, curtain system. So it's going, to, it's going to open equivalently both left and right. And so that means that if I don't uh, get it set up straight, it, the screen might be off center. Of course, then I could also play with my projector settings and you know uh, move the image a little bit left and right until I get it square on. So that, that shouldn't be an issue. So I, I now I know that this test works. This is great. I'm going to build the second panel. Then I'm going to cover it with the uh, with the velour material, uh, velvet material, I guess I bought, uh, and uh, get it set up and give it a test with that. So that should be the the next step in. So I thought I would show you just a little bit uh, how these were framed, um, not getting into detail, but really, once again, two by one or one by two uh, pine lumber, uh, brad nailed together. Uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier on, I added some uh, corner metal brackets like that to maintain uh, their squareness. And uh, at the ends, how it hooks up to the track is by using these eyelets, um, perfectly centered on the, uh, on the vertical uh, plane so that uh, they will hang uh, nice and straight uh, with gravity. As you can see, I marked them off uh, uh, really well with a pencil so that I'd ensure that they'd be uh, dead center. I'm using four just to carry the weight and I didn't screw them in completely. Um, reason being is that way I can adjust them a little bit, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, a turn in or a turn out means that I can make adjustments to, to ensure that these, uh, these panels hang uh, perfectly straight. Uh, ultimately how they're connected up to the track. So with the Zemi Smart, you get these little uh, rollers that uh, that glide along the track and then uh, to hook it up with my eyelet here I'm using these little s hooks uh, that I picked up uh, on Amazon as well as uh, these eyelets um, and they uh, basically hang from that so I'm uh, gonna give it uh, another try now with my with my two panels in and uh, take it from there So I do want to point out one thing about the Zemi Smart Track and how we're going to adapt it to work with these panels. Um, so as I said, Zemi Smart has a good instructional uh, video on how to put together this thing. And if you do it the traditional way, of course, is that the, the pulley system is meant to pull a curtain. So the, the actual mobile part that runs on the cable through the track is pulling the front of the curtain and then, of course, tugging it back towards the ends. Now, I don't want to do that with the panels. I want the pulley system to be more at the beginning of the train rather than at, uh, sorry, at the, at the back of the train rather than at the, uh, than at the front of the train. And the reason being is that the panel, of course, is, is rigid, whereas curtains are not. So 
when the, when the train system itself runs back all the way to the outer edge, it's going to want to push all the way back. And of course, through experimentation, I found out that what that does is, of course, tugs on it and it just wants to rip through my eyelets, even though the motor is programmed to, when it senses resistance, that it's going to stop. But it is going to pull for some time. Now, I use those little S hooks that hold everything up and they just split apart and break. So I've reconfigured the trolley uh, up at the top so that it works best for the panels. And I'm going to show you that now. What I'm trying to clarify here is that initially I had this portion here, which is the, the mobile trolley or train, if you want, that runs on the belt through the track. Initially, I had the little rolling freewheelers on the track behind this, on this side. And so it was pulling the panel left and right rather than pushing the panel left and right. So what I've done is I've removed the little freewheeling trolleys on this side and I've moved them to the front. Now I've done lots of experimentation with this and I found that the optimal way to do this is to have the three freewheelers in the front with a connection across the third one with a tie wrap to the front of the train, which is where normally a curtain would be hanging at the very front. And then an another little extra one here, tiny tie wrap off of the back through that little hole there. So I'll just back out so you can see this design. And I'll explain why this is optimal. So I'm going to run the panel back towards the left here, and you'll see it in motion, and you'll understand why, in my particular case, this works out optimally. So this ends nicely, with very little room left between the panel and the motor. And for myself, when I come back, is this is lined up with my screen nice and even. Now it's hard to see because it's such black, but it does actually end just beyond my screen, so I'm not uh, covering any uh, screen real estate. So this is what I find is the most optimal situation um, to retract my panels. And there's another advantage we'll explain in just one second. So you'll notice that the predetermined stop position has a little bit of a gap between the end of the track and where the trolley ends. And that's because once the system powers up for the first time, it establishes where the limits are. So it goes all the way to the back and stops, and then it juts forward a little bit. Now, in the case of a power failure, it's going to do that again. So I've got this unplugged right now, and I'm going to plug this back in and go back up here. And I'm going to ask the system to do a full open. And what you're going to see is that it's going to try to find its limits again. And then it comes forward a bit, and if I hit the back button, it can come back just a little bit, but it won't go all the way back to the start so that it protects itself. So I found that position to be ideal for setting up where my edge of my screen is, and that's why I have my panel just a little bit shifted to the left as compared to the very back of the trolley. So every situation is going to be a little bit different and you'll have to experiment based on your size of room, of course. If you have a wider room and you have lots of room for your panel, you could set this up a little bit differently. But I just want to point out that you have to experiment a little bit and you can figure out an optimal setup for your design. So I wanted to break away from this build project for just a moment and talk to you about support for my channel and how I can grow more content. So I had some good news. I spoke with Zemismart and they got an early edit of this video and they liked what they saw. I like their product and I think it's really nifty for this type of project, but not only that, their curtain system is pretty cool anywhere else in your house. So if you click on any of the links below to buy their product, it's an affiliate link that will provide some support for this channel and I'd appreciate that. Also, I recently set up my website at mixturerich.net, which is also linked down below. And so if you go to my website, you will find out a little bit about me. There's a collection area of some of the videos that I put together and it will be the anchor point for where I'll be producing future content. So if you go to my website, you will also find a merchandise store, which I have now set up. And on that site, you will find apparel sporting the new Mixture Rich 
logo that you saw in the opening credits of this video, as well as my slogan campaign, which is hashtag multipotentiality. And I'm sure you'd appreciate multipotentiality. As you're watching this video, you're probably the type of person who likes to do lots of different projects and, you know, especially cool ones like a motorized masking system. So if you can support my website and my merchandise channel, that will give a little bit of support for the Mixture Rich YouTube channel and I can produce more content. So let's get on with finishing off this build with the next and final steps, as well as the grand reveal. I finally got uh, the Valence uh, put together, all framed up with uh, one again, once again, uh, one by two lumber, as you saw a little earlier in the video, and I covered it in uh, the same velvet material as I did the um, the cinema masks themselves, and I attached some brackets to it, and it's now installed up at the ceiling, and of course, it's a little bit hard to see, in fact, because it's uh, black and light absorbing. If it wasn't for those pot lamps that are kind of uh, sheening off of it, you wouldn't see much of it, but uh, now it's got... Uh, the uh, cinema masks dropping in from behind and uh, that hides all of the track work at the top. As you can see, what's left of course is the motor and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are curtains that will come and drape down from the corners to hide the cinema screen masks themselves when they're retracted in the full open position as well as any of the hardware and wiring. So today to finish off the project, I'm gonna be putting up the curtains that go uh, at each end. So I bought these off of Amazon. They're these uh, sliding adjustable uh, curtain rod um, hangers. And I had already uh, put a wood strip in behind uh, my valance so that it's able to uh, receive the, the little connecting ends on this. Now this is too long, so I only need about 22 inches on each end. So I've cut them down and uh, they're still adjustable, but uh, I'll be able to find the sort of perfect distance for that. So that's the next step. I'm already getting ready to do that over there, and uh, I'll show you the completed project soon. So I've got the project complete. The valance is up. The curtains are up and everything's operational and it looks like a million bucks. Alexa, screen mask 64%. So watch these masks close in on the 16 to 9 ratio video. Yeah, one of the mixture rich videos. That's me flying back to Ottawa from Toronto. A little promotion there. And look at that. It's stunning. The project is a great success and it's cost effective. Alexa, open screen mask. I encourage you to do this project. I wish you best of luck. If you have questions and comments, put them down below. And please subscribe, please like this video, and we'll see you next time on the Mixture Rich channel.